thunderous sounds, ash, deep holes, and debris. That's what Starship's first orbital test flight left at SpaceX's Starbase launch pad at the South Texas locale of Boca Chica Beach. After that launch, many doubts were raised about whether the Starship project could return or not. And SpaceX's definitive answer was yes. Faced with insurmountable doubt, the Starship project not only soldiered on, it also gained more momentum. Having spent the past few months making more than a thousand changes, SpaceX is set to prove to the world that the results of the next Starship flight will be different from the previous. How will those changes affect the next flight, and will it really make a difference? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Daily life at Boca Chica Beach, South Texas is still going on quietly and peacefully. In the nearby vicinity of Starbase, SpaceX engineers are still buzzing about like hard-working bees. But right now, the center of attention is standing on the OLM. That is the S-25 and B-9 prototype, which will be the central focus of the Starship's second orbital test flight. After many upgrades and tests, this Leviathan is counting down with us to the day the chains of legality is removed so it can spread its powerful wings and tear up the sky. The current image of S-25 and B-9 probably makes many people feel nostalgic, as it reminds us of S-24 and B-7, the prototype that stood here about half a year ago. But hold on just a moment, zoom in closer there. You see that? There are quite a few differences between them. On the Starship, under the Starship, and more. What's the purpose of these changes? Let's turn the clock back to better understand the modifications made here. It was April 20th at SpaceX's launch site. Everyone was counting down. There was smoke and dust rising, and the engines began to create powerful thrust. Then, S-24 and B-7 took off. But after, there seemed to be some problems. Some engines weren't working. Though it continued to fly, there were other technical difficulties. The two stages couldn't separate. And finally, while it was tumbling in mid-air, the command center flipped the switch, triggering the self-destruct sequence, prematurely ending the initial integrated flight test less than four minutes into the mission. Meanwhile, at the OLM, once the smoke and dust cleared, we were presented yet another major situation. A large crater appeared below the OLM and concrete debris was scattered to the surrounding areas of Starbase. Immediately, investigations were conducted and many problems were pointed out, of which included the engine, separation process, and launch system. After identifying the problem, many changes and upgrades were made. The first point of interest was the engine. After taking off, a few engines failed to operate, followed by a few more engines that stopped working during the flight. The problem is believed to be due to the hydraulic unit system, and igniter being unstable, causing some engines to not be activated. Regarding the problem of some engines shutting down during flight, the reason is considered to be due to the large amount of energy generated, causing engine parts such as hot air ducts, nozzles, and manifolds to be unable to withstand heat and pressure, resulting in multiple engine failures. That's why SpaceX has made new upgrades to the engine. Manifolds were improved, creating higher torque on the bolts to prevent leaks, and hot air ducts and nozzles were strengthened to withstand large amounts of heat and pressure. A new electric TVC system was designed to replace the hydraulic unit system. This will help the engine operate more stably and reliably, avoiding engine failure during or even before flight. Next comes the change in the separation process. During the previous flight, the separation system failed, resulting in the two stages being unable to separate, forcing SpaceX to intentionally destroy the system during the flight. But besides the problem with separation, the previous system also showed a few other disadvantages. When it came time for separation, the Super Heavy's engines would shut down, the two stages would separate, and then the second stage engines would activate. This meant that there would be a short but significant amount of time where there would be no thrust. If we were to maintain thrust, the second stage would have to be activated earlier, but the heat and pressure from the second stage engines could damage parts of the two stages or even the entire vehicle. 
Therefore, a solution from the past was applied, the hot staging mechanism. This method has been used by the Soviet N-1 and Soyuz rockets since the last century. In this method, there is a ring with vents between the two stages. These vents help direct the heat and pressure created by the engines on the second stage to the outside, preventing it from building up and leading to damage to the first stage, or even the entire vehicle. This mechanism will also help the second stage to activate as soon as possible when it comes time to separate, so that the thrust will be maintained continuously. Additionally, this newly added mechanism will also help make the separation process simpler and more reliable, avoiding problems that were evident in the previous launch. The last notable change involves the launch system. During the previous flight, the thrust of up to 16.7 million pounds was responsible for the damage below the OLM. Aside from the deep hole, pieces of concrete were broken and scattered around, causing damage to other facilities, notably the dents on the fuel tanks at the tank farm. In order to remedy this complication, SpaceX created a new system called the Water Deluge System. It consists of a hexagonal steel plate composed of seven smaller steel plates placed below the OLM. These steel plates have manifold systems connected to the water supply tank through deluge pipes. Water will be pumped to the steel plates, then sprayed up through the small holes of the steel plates, or as Musk described, like a gigantic shower head that's upside down. The durable steel plates along with a new water system will help reduce the temperature and pressure generated by the 33 Raptor 2 engines, thereby protecting the launch system and other infrastructures from damage. These are the three most notable changes made after that fateful flight. However, the aforementioned modifications are only three of the more than a thousand changes that were implemented. All these changes have taken place since that flight until now now, which has been about five months. Just five months. At other companies, it would have taken up to a year or more, but perhaps only at SpaceX could we witness this incredible feat. Making a comment on the changes, SpaceX's founder Elon Musk said, I think the probability of this next flight getting to orbit is much higher than the last one. Maybe it's like 60%. Although this rate does not seem too high, this statement still shows confidence in the changes he and his colleagues have made and a belief in the difference that will be created. As of recording this, the Starship S25 and B9 combo is standing proudly on the launch pad where S24 and B7 once stood ready to fly, ready to prove that Musk's confidence is well-placed. However, SpaceX still needs to deal with another issue, which is receiving approval from government agencies. After SpaceX announced the completion of 57 out of 63 corrective actions required by the FAA, along with successful testing and the full-stack process, many people believed the launch would have taken place soon. In fact, a lot of us thought that a mid-September launch was possible Possible, but now it's basically the beginning of October and after the FAA comes the Fish and Wildlife Service, the next agency to step in to review Starship's improvements since the April 20th explosion. This has caused Starship's next flight to continue to be delayed. In fact, it's expected that we'll have to wait until 2024 to witness Starship flying back into the sky. But if the S25 and B9 pair is successfully launched, it'll be a big step for the aerospace industry. Human history may even turn a new leaf, ushering in the era of interplanetary civilization. Now I know this is quite the perspective, but please let's not forget what SpaceX has accomplished. More than a thousand changes in less than half a year, which is a remarkable feat. The S24 and B7 combination may have left SpaceX with debris, piles of ash, and a full-blown sinkhole, and for us, these would have been disasters. But for SpaceX, failure does not mean the end. 
Failure will be the premise for future success. They've proven this many times in the past. Without the valuable experience from S24 and B7, we wouldn't have bore witness to the nearly thousand changes in the current S25 and B9 setup. The engine was different. The method of separation was different. And the launch system, different. A lot of difference has been made. And now we wait for the final result. But will this outcome be different from the last? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the interesting happenings over at Starbase. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.